Hello and welcome to this video for module 10 of the Netbox Zero to Hero training course. If you haven't already checked out the early modules yet, then you can find the link to them in the notes below to get started. For this demo, I'm using a Docker instance of Netbox running locally on my laptop. If you'd like to follow along with the demo, you can easily do that. There are a couple of links down below to help you spin up your own instance of Netbox, along with a link to the course that accompanies this video. Now it's time to connect the new site to the internet. And in this video, network engineer Susan will add the new internet circuit. So by the end of this video, you'll be able to describe how Netbox models service providers and circuits and understand how to connect circuits directly to device interfaces via cables. You'll also see another example of how to use Postman to make API calls to Netbox to add this data programmatically. Susan is logged into Netbox and has retrieved her API token, which she'll use to authenticate her API calls in Postman. If you need a recap on how to set this up yourself in Postman or how to explore the API documentation, then just check out the modules one and three of this course for a quick overview of that. You'll also find a link to the Postman collection that accompanies this course in the notes below. Okay, so in Postman, you'll notice that there is a folder in the collection called circuits. And in here we have API calls already written for you to get you started. So click on providers, for example. And you can see the API call that is being made is to the circuit forward slash providers endpoint and clicking on this returns no results yet, as you would expect. As a reminder, if you need to explore the API to find the endpoint you need, then simply click on the rest API link in the footer of the web interface. And then, for example, click on circuits and providers. You see the same results as in the postman request that you just made. You also have the link to the rest API swagger documentation which you can explore to help you build your API calls. So with that said, before you can add a circuit, you must first add a provider. So the first API call is a post request to the circuits slash providers endpoint. And in the body of the request, there is a JSON definition of the Telstra provider object. There is a name, a slug, an account reference, a portal URL, and a couple of contact emails, one for the NOC and one for admin. Click send to make the call and there is a successful request with a 201 response message back from the Netbox server. And the response contains the full JSON object of the newly created provider. Great, so now the next API call to make is to add the circuit type. Again, there is a post request in the collection, this time to the circuits forward slash circuit types endpoint. And the body of the request has a JSON definition of the circuit type object, which just contains the name, the slug and a description. Click send again, and it's another successful request with a 201 response message. And the response contains the newly created circuit type. Once again, note that there is a numeric ID for each of the objects that have been created. These numeric IDs are very important for future API calls. Great, so with the provider and circuit type all set up, you can go ahead and add the actual circuit. Again, there is a post request in the collection, this time to the circuits forward slash circuits endpoint. And the body of the request has a JSON definition of the circuit, which contains the circuit ID, which is a string, the provider, which is the ID of the provider object you just created. And if you need to check this, you can run the get providers API call to return a list of all the providers. And then the ID of the circuit type, the status, the tenant, and the commit rate. So click send again, and the response is a 201, so that's great. And the response contains our newly created circuit. All good so far. Now, the last API call to make in Postman is to add the circuit termination. Remember that the documentation states that each circuit may have up to two terminations, A and Z defined. Each termination could be associated with a particular site or provider network. So in this case, the JSON payload contains the circuit ID and it defines the Z end as being the site name. And it also defines the port speed as 200 megabits per second. So click send again, and it's another successful request. Now for the last part, switch back to the web interface to check what has now been added by the API calls, starting with circuits and then providers. Then click on Telstra and you can now see the provider information and also note that there is the new circuit that you added. So click the link for that to view the details and notice that the Z end termination is into the Brisbane site. Now notice that there is a connect icon, so click on that and select interface. And now you can see that you're adding a new cable with the A side defined as the circuit. And for the B side, select the location and the rack. Then the device is the router and the interface is gigabit ethernet 001. 
then select the type as CAT6. The color can be purple and the cable is two meters long and click create. And finally, as with all cables, you can click the trace icon to bring up a visual of the cable connection. And as you can see, it goes from the router interface to the new circuit. So I hope that's been a useful overview of how Netbox models providers and circuits and how to connect circuits directly to device interfaces. And also how to do this by using some new API calls added to your Postman collection for Netbox. Don't forget, if you have any questions as you go through the course, then pop on over to the Netbox Zero to Hero channel on the NetDev community Slack. If you aren't already a member, then you can sign up for free using the link below. So once again, thanks very much for watching.